Parts C and D involve concentration. There are many ways that we have uh, to measure concentration, which is essentially uh, a way of saying how much solute there is in a solution. Among the most common, especially in chemistry, is molarity. It's uh, one we use a lot. You'll notice in part B that most of the solutions that we use to test had this number 0.1 m in front of them. That 0.1 is the molarity. There are different types of percents, percent by mass, percent by volume, and, per and uh, the mass volume percent. We're going to look in this experiment at percent by mass and mass volume percent. We will not uh, deal with percent by volume. Equivalence and milliequivalence, specifically milliequivalence per liter, which is a value that is used quite a bit in medical sciences, although it's not used all that often uh, outside of medicine. And there are others as well, but those are the ones we will deal with for now. Molarity, as I mentioned, is a very important concentration term in chemistry. Uh, we abbreviate the molarity with the letter M. The formula for the molarity is simply the moles of solute present in a solution divided by the total liters of that solution. It is critically important that you remember when you see big M, that isn't one unit. It's not moles. It is moles of the solute for every liter of the solution. For example, let's say we wanted to make a sodium chloride solution that was one molar. That's how we pronounce that, by the way. We read it as 1.0 molar. The way we would do that is we would first say, well, how much do I want? Let's say I want one liter. That makes uh, this much easier. If I want one liter of that solution, then I'm going to need 1.0 moles of sodium chloride, uh, which is 58.44 grams. We find that from the uh, molecular weight, or uh, we call it formula mass, which you should have already learned how to do uh, by now in lecture. And you will take that and add enough water until the total volume is one liter. Now, incidentally, uh, that's not the only way you could make a 1.0 molar solution. So I could have 1.0 moles in 1.0 liters. 1 divided by 1 is 1. I could have had 1.5 moles of sodium chloride in 1.5 liters. 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1. Uh, so you see the idea here is, since this is 1, Whatever the number of moles are here, just needs to divide it by that number, needs to give you 1.0. If I wanted to make a 2.0 molar sodium chloride solution, I would need twice as much salt per liter. So to make a 2 molar, if I want to make 2 liters, what would I need? To make 2 liters, I would need 4 moles of salt for every 2 liters. 4 divided by 2 is 2.0. If I wanted to make 10 liters, I would need 20 moles of salt. 20 divided by 10 is 2. Okay. The mass percent is going to tell you uh, for every 100 grams of the solution, how much of it is uh, solute. And the way we calculate it is we would say, all right, let's take the grams of solute divided by the sum of the grams of solute plus the grams of solvent. What do we call the solute plus the solvent? We call it the solution. So we could rewrite this as grams of solute divided by grams of solution, all times 100%. And we commonly use this symbol here, percent m over m, uh, to tell us that we're doing mass percent. It is customary that if someone leaves off m over m or doesn't mention that it's mass percent, uh, but they're just using a percent, they usually mean mass percent. Uh, it's the most common uh, type of percent that we deal with. So for example, let's say I had 100 grams of a 10.0% by mass sodium chloride solution. If I have 100 grams, then 10 grams of sodium chloride would be in that, and 90 grams of water. 
uh, because if we look here, 10 grams of solute plus 90 grams of water would be a total of 100 grams of solution. It is critically important that you be able to look at these percentages again and put them into words. So the way I look at that in words is 10.0% means there is 10 grams of solute for every 100 grams of solution. Mass volume percent uh, we will deal with fairly often in this class, but we don't see it a lot in chemistry in general. It's sometimes called the weight volume percent. And what it is, is it's the mass of the solute for every 100 milliliters of solution. So you'll notice the main difference here is it's grams of solute over volumes of solution times 100% in milliliters. Okay, so the denominator is different. And so we use the symbol percent M over V for that. So if I see 15% M over V sugar solution, the way I read that is there are 15 grams of sugar for every 100 milliliters of solution. What if there was 300 milliliters of solution? Well, if there's three times uh, the volume, then that'd be three times the number of grams. There would be 45 grams of sugar for every 300 milliliters. In other words, that ratio needs to essentially be the same. 15 over 100 is 15%, 0.15. Equivalence and milliequivalence is kind of a way of measuring, uh, in this context, measuring the concentration of charges. So we're going to use it for uh, ions, cations, which are positively charged, and anions, which are negatively charged. So, as I said, we're using it to keep track of charge. Uh, the total number of equivalents of an ion is found by multiplying the absolute charge of the ion by the number of moles of it in the solution. So, for example, 2.0 moles of sodium ions is 2.0 equivalents. On the other hand, if I had 2.0 moles of uh, nitride ion, that would have six equivalents. Uh, when I say absolute charge, that means uh, absolute value. Regardless of whether the number is positive or negative, you make it into a positive number. So in this case, I have 2.0 times positive 3 is 6.0. So these numbers will always be expressed using positive numbers, even if the charge is negative. So we'll commonly see uh, in laboratory tests, uh, concentrations of ions and other species represented in milliequivalents per liter. So one equivalent is a thousand milliequivalents. So, for example, if I look here and I say, okay, I have a concentration of 150 milliequivalents per liter of potassium, then what that means is that there is 0 0.150 moles of potassium ions in a liter of the solution. Notice what I did here is I divided that number by a thousand times the charge of potassium, one. A solution which has, say, 200 milliequivalents per liter of calcium ions contains 0.1 moles of calcium ions per liter. Uh, to really see where these numbers are coming from here, Let's go ahead and take a look at a simplified map that will express that. But it will ultimately involve noting that calcium has a 2 plus charge. So although we don't need to make these calculations in this lab, it's definitely worth knowing how to do this process. And that's why I'm going to include a slide here. If we want to go from the molarity of an ion to the milliequivalents per liter for that ion, all we have to do is multiply the molarity by 1,000 times the charge of the ion. Similarly, if we wanted to go from milliequivalents per liter to molarity, you simply divide by 1,000 times the charge of the ion. Let's look at a couple examples. Let's say, for example, we have a solution that is 0 0.040 molar sodium. What do we do? We take this number and multiply it by 
a thousand times the charge of sodium. So a thousand times one is simply a thousand. So 0 0.040 times a thousand is 40 milliequivalents per liter. Okay. If we wanted to go the other way, we would be taking 40 and uh, dividing it by 1,000. Calcium here has a 2 plus charge. So in order to convert molarity to milliequivalents per liter, we're going to take this and multiply by 2,000, 2 times 1,000 here. Okay. So 0 0.010 times 2,000 is 20 milliequivalents per liter of calcium. In part C, you're going to see some pictures of some various uh, IV bags, uh, which uh, would be connected to a patient in a hospital. These are fairly old IV bags. In fact, these IV bags, for all I know, might be older than me. Probably not that old, but they're pretty close. And we're going to, even though these are going to be labeled as being a dextrose solution or another kind of solution, we're going to keep things easy and we're just going to label them as one, two, and three. Those are, will be our three IV bags. And then you'll answer some questions based on the values um, that you have observed there. Now, filling out the report sheet for Part C might be a little bit tricky. So let me just tell you exactly what you're going to do. On the first row, for where it says type of solution, you're just going to put in one, two, or three. So the first column will be one, second column two, third column three. Row two asks you for the cations, and you want to not only give the formula of the cation, you also want to give its concentration in milliequivalents per liter. So for example, if sodium was the only thing in that bag, you would write Na plus equals 21. If there were both sodium and potassium in that IV bag, you would list it something like this, sodium equals 21, and then on the next, uh, you know, just go on to right below that, you would write calcium equals 32, for example. So those are just some numbers I'm picking out. They're probably not going to be the numbers on your IV bags. Anions, you do exactly the same thing as row two, uh, but just with the anions formula. So chloride equals 15 uh, it would just mean that the milliequivalence of chloride is that value here. Again, if there are two anions, you would list them both uh, and their values in that box. Total charge of the cations, you would add up all the values that are in the row two box. If there's only one value, it would be exactly the same thing as the row two box. So for example, in row two, let's say the only thing it says is sodium is 21. Then in this box, you would write 21. On the other hand, let's say that in row two, it has two values, like you're seeing here. Sodium is 21, potassium is 32. You would just add those numbers together. That would give you 53, and that is what would go in row four. Row five, same idea as in row four, except you're adding up the anions this time. Again, as positive numbers. Finally, in row six, uh, you will add up the value from row four and row five. Well, not exactly. Row five uh, has a negative charge. It's the anions. So what we're going to really do is you're going to take row four plus the negative of row five, or to make that simpler, row four minus row five. And that's the reason we are subtracting right there. Okay, here is IV bag Roman numeral one. The concentration is written rather small right there. So let's go ahead and blow that up. And now you see the concentration uh, written quite a bit uh, larger. So you'll see it says electrolytes, milliequivalents per liter, and that this bag contains sodium and chloride. Pause the video and write down those values. When you're ready to go, unpause the video and continue. Here is IV bag two, 
again, the text is small and hard to read, so we blow that up. And again, you want to look at the concentration here. Uh, this bag contains sodium, potassium, and chloride. So sodium 34 milliequivalents per liter, potassium 20, chloride 54. Write those values down. And here is IV bag 3. IV bag 3 also contains three different types of ions, sodium, potassium, and chloride. Pause if needed. And that will be the end of this video.